The Meg 2, The Trench, is out this week, and since this new entry follows some of the main characters from the first film, it's time for a quick recap to save you two hours of a rewatch. We open deep underwater as the title swims away with the text revealing that we are witnessing a deep sea rescue mission on the SSBN Rogue, and this is in the Philippine Trench. We meet Jonas Taylor, played by Jason Statham, who is attempting to save a crew of a damaged nuclear submarine, but all hell breaks loose when they're rammed by an unidentified creature. Crushing the hull, they pull as many people as possible into the rescue vehicle, but two members of Jonas's crew are trapped and time is running out. In a snap decision, he must make the difficult decision to leave them behind and rescue himself and the others he has already saved. And he does so just in time. This is definitely a theme in this movie. Jump to five years later, a beautiful sunset shot over the ocean with a drone and a helicopter. This film may not be deep, but it spares no expenses. We are now located on the Mana One research station, 200 miles off the Chinese coast. We meet billionaire Jack Morris, played by Rain Wilson, and he meets Dr. Minwei Zhang, who's played by Winston Cho. On deck is his daughter, Suyin, played by Bingbing Li, who is the chief biologist. Morris is visiting the research station as the investor, seeing where his billions of dollars have gone. Here they intend to lead a mission to explore the hidden section of the Marina Trench. And get ready because we're about to be bombarded with every character's introduction at the same time. He meets engineer Jax, played by Ruby Rose, Dr. Heller, who is the medical officer and he's played by Robert Taylor, DJ, played by Paige Kennedy, who pilots the remote explorer, Mac, played by Cliff Curtis, who is the research manager, and finally, Laurie Taylor, who just happens to be Jonas's ex-wife. If you forgot already, Jonas is Jason Statham's character. I know there's a lot of people to remember. Laurie is played by Jessica McNamee and is a diver and submarine pilot. We also get a brief introduction to Toshi and the Wall, who are two of Laurie's crew members. Just as Morris has arrived, it's a very exciting moment. Laurie and her team in their own vehicle is successful in fighting the hidden section of the trench. Right below what they know as the thermocline, they discover an array of unexplored flora and fauna. What is a beautiful moment soon turns sour when they are attacked by an unidentified creature, severing the communication with Laurie and the team back at the Manor One. The rest of the team spring into action discussing how they're going to rescue Laurie and her team. And of course, there's only one man for the job. It's Jonas who has been the only one successful in deep sea missions of, well, this deep. One of the people he saved is actually Dr. Heller himself. But Dr. Heller is quick to slam Jonas. He claims that Jonas left the two trapped crew members behind because of a, quote, pressure-induced psychosis. Dr. Heller denounces Jonas's story of the vessel being under attack from a giant unknown creature. But Dr. Zhang insists that they find Jonas and seek his help as he's the only one who may be able to save Laurie and her crew. Zhang and Mac travel to Thailand where they find Jonas in hiding, broken by his last mission. Initially doubtful, Jonas eventually agrees to help after listening to the recording of the last communication between the crew and Laurie. It's his ex-wife and it's also his chance to face his demons. This time he'll get it right. We cut to Laurie and her crew who are working on the ship but are attacked again. Su Yin, growing impatient, attempts to rescue the crew but is attacked by a giant squid. But just moments before the squid can crush her vessel, it is killed by an enormous shark. It's the Meg. Jonas wasn't crazy. It proves that there is a creature that could have attacked the vessel in the last mission. Jonas meets Su Yin's daughter, who softens his character for us. She is smart and funny, breaking through his tough exterior. And he promises to save her mom. Descending on his mission, he sends Su Yin back up and he finds the lost vessel almost too easily with Laurie and her crew inside. Although one of their crew sacrifices himself without the crew realizing until it's too late. But back at Mana One, Jonas gets the blame for again leaving someone behind. Although Dr. Heller apologizes because now there is proof of a creature, he was not crazy. After some research, the crew realizes that the giant shark is a megalodon, a species previously believed to be extinct. It was 
the largest shark that ever existed. The meeting is interrupted by Su Lin's daughter's screams. In a horrific scene, she has come face to face with the Meg. It seems that the Meg has escaped the thermocline boundary and now is free to kill everything in sight with no natural predators. The crew decide to put a tracker on the Meg until they can figure out a solution. And in a wild scene, Jonas gets the tracker on the creature and escapes its jaws by milliseconds. Su Yin then travels down into the ocean in a clear shark tank to lure it and get close enough to poison the Meg. But the shark attacks the tank, which allows her to get close enough to poison it, but also cracks her mask and causes her to lose oxygen. With time running out, Jonas is to the rescue, once again saving her. And say it with me now, just in time with inches to spare. This time, no one was left behind. The Megalodon dies and cue credits. No, just joking. It dies from the poison, but here's the twist. Just as they're celebrating, an even larger Meg emerges from the water, eating the other shark, which was hanging up from their boat. It kills one of Laurie's crew members and destroys the ship. And Dr. Heller is up for his turn as a hero as he sacrifices himself to distract the Meg and save Jax, who is in the water. The surviving crew regroups at Mana 1, but unfortunately, Dr. Zhang dies on the way from injuries. Morris announces that he has alerted multiple authorities and has enlisted a team to kill the Meg. But when he leaves on a helicopter, it's revealed that all he really cares about is lawsuits pertaining to the crew. And he doesn't really want the world to know that he was involved in the accidental release of the Meg. So he heads out with a small crew to mindlessly bomb the ocean in hope that he can quietly kill the monster. But they accidentally kill a whale. As Morris and his crew flee the site, he falls in the water and meets the Meg up close and personal chomp chomp. Back at the Manor One, they discover Morris's plan and realize they must confront the Meg by themselves. The Meg attacks a crowded beach in Sanya Bay, China, devouring several people. It's an intense scene with the amount of bodies fleeing the water in panic. And I'm sad to say amongst the panic is a dog who has escaped its owners paddling along. The Mana crew stops the carnage by diverting the Meg's attention using a whale call. Jonas and Su Yin then work together in small vessels to lure the Meg away. A media helicopter attempting to record the scene crashes and this collides with the crew on the boat. Su Yin has to swoop in to save her daughter and her other co-workers who are in the water. So Jonas is now on his own and of course he plays hero. He tells his crew that he plans to sacrifice himself. He has a plan. He grazes the Meg with his vessel slashing its body, causing it to bleed. But there's a massive struggle and the Meg fights back. Somehow he manages to stab the creature in the eye and his initial plan works as the blood attracts a massive amount of sharks that attack the Meg's flesh all at once, finishing it off. And don't worry, I know I left you hanging for a second, but Jonas reunites with the crew and along the way he finds the dog that's still swimming. Suyin and Jonas have a moment, potential new daddy material and credits. And that's the Meg. That's what happens. The Meg 2 will be out this August. And guess what? Jonas returns and there's a lot of the original crew. Interesting that I don't see Su Yin on the list, but her daughter is there. This one looks to be more mysterious and hopefully more terrifying and dark than the previous. Are you going to be watching the Meg 2? If you did enjoy this video and found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay spooky.